Oh, I would have to tell you, <clears throat> given what happened last year, uh, when there was, uh, you know, a rumored departure to either Indiana or North Carolina State by uh, John Beeline, Coach Huggins and I talked briefly about that. And uh, the way in which he responded to me about, you know, how could I say these things that I do to our kids and make the kind of promises and then leave, you know, I guess I just mistakenly took that to mean at least for the next few years that was going to be the case. Um, but last night when we talked with him, it was obvious that this was a much more significant uh, decision for him than we would have, would have, I would have ever thought. Tim, what time did you talk with him and, and was his mind absolutely set when he walked in <coughs> your door? No, um, it was, I don't know, 8.30 or 9, something like that, till midnight or beyond. Uh, but no, I felt like uh, he was a very tortured soul. I felt like he was uh, conflicted in many ways. And uh, when I asked him, Bob, do you think leaving now is the right thing to do? And he said no. Uh, and then I said, how many times in your life have you known what the right thing is to do and not done it? And he said, never. I, you know, that to me was an indication that he was still wrestling with that decision. And so um, we agreed that we would meet again this morning. Um, that got pushed back and we didn't meet until this afternoon. And so I continued to remain optimistic that in the end doing the right thing was <coughs> going to carry the day. So your feeling last night at midnight was above 50-50 yeah. that he would stay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did he do anything like besides that? going home? Oh, anything besides going home. <clears throat> you know, um, I would have to tell you, by and large, the biggest part of what he was dealing with was this might be the last last time I get a chance to go home. And believe me, I'm living proof of the desire to go home. I, I understand that. And that's what I told Bob. It's not about whether you should go back home or not. It's there's a right time for everything. And this isn't the right time. West Virginia will be disappointed if you don't come, but it'll be much greater for us. And as we met with the players today and the staff, obviously they're feeling some of the same emotions we are. And it's a difficult thing right now for them to, uh, to understand, you know, the commitment that, uh, that they made. Um, and now you know, we're starting over. So uh, believe me, it's, it's very difficult for our kids and we're obviously very concerned about about players' situations, guys, whether they'll stay or go, have you talked with them about that? Or? Yeah. No, I, I told them our policy is consistent here. We do not grant releases. And uh, until the uh, next head coach is in place, um, I'm not going to consider waiving that policy. Uh, but as you know, Howard, every time you make a coaching change, there are inevitably kids that are going to leave unhappy and I'm not saying that may not happen here but obviously the emotions of today are pretty raw and so there are a lot of people that are feeling a lot of things within our team right now. Any players that come to you and say I want to go? No. Have you had a conversation with Michael Beasley yet? Uh, no. When you talk about not granting releases, does that go for kids who sign a letter of intent as well? Yeah, our policy as a department is that we don't grant releases. You know, we invest a lot in the recruitment and training and scholarshiping and supporting our student athletes. And for us to grant releases is something that we really have to be convinced is in both the best interest of uh, the university and the student athlete. Was there any uh, discussion of the <coughs> 
a disappointment of, that the NCAA committee's passing over K State for the tournament? Not the once. Year? Not no. once. Not once. No, they had zero to do with it. As you move forward, uh, Delonta Hill and Frank Martin, what are their considerations? Um, I know they did a lot of the recruiting. What are their considerations uh, more so or, or not as much so as maybe somebody else, any other applicants for the head coach? Man, you know, at this point, I'm sure you would expect me to say every option is going to be considered. Um, obviously, we would like to keep the disruptions to a minimum, but more important than that, we want to make sure that as we go forward, we're giving our kids a chance to win championships. And whoever that turns out to be, um, we'll find out here in time. Kenny, you, you've said in the past you always have a list of possible candidates, but one year after hiring Bob Buggins, did you think about a need to freshen up that list and pay attention to who's no. out there? No. No. <coughs> as soon as you're here, bitch. <laughs> no. You know, I, yeah, you always know candidates, but I, I – Honestly, if we would have known, like John said, <clears throat> that this was how Bob felt about West Virginia and that despite the conversations we had about, you know, this is a decision and that we see in long-term ways and his admission that, yeah, in fact, I think he even said this is a place he was planning to retire. And uh, so we didn't didn't have any reason to think that uh, that had changed and even last night I still felt like yeah you know his heart's pulling him uh, back home with his friends and family but in the end he knows what the right thing is and he'll do it. How leery will you be this time around to looking for a coach? How, how, how leery will you be about when you go look for a guy and what has to be done? I don't even know how to answer that Howard. Uh, it's probably not a good day to ask me about my feeling about humans. Are you going to use the services of Eddie Fogel again? Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll. Eddie and I will talk at some point. When did West Virginia ask for permission to talk to Coach Huggins? I'm not going to comment on that. Did Coach Huggins make any recommendations of the guys on his staff? Um, no. Can't say that he did. Obviously, he feels good about his guys, but uh, to be honest with you, I didn't really give him a chance. Did you talk to Coach Huggins about the kids that he recruited to Kansas State? Any, any comments he made perhaps about, you know, hey, I recruited those guys? Any, any commentary back and forth about the guys that he has coming in next year? You mean in terms of the commitment they made? Exactly. Well, other than... You know, these kids made a commitment to you. Uh, you know, I know kids uh, make decisions on, based on a lot of things, but clearly who the head coach is is a big part of that. And uh, we'll see in time how that plays out. I can't, I can't promise you anything about how this will proceed. It's still, uh, as I said earlier, a very raw situation for us to try and understand. Just to clarify, you did say that you told Bob Huggins you would match or exceed whatever offer West Virginia Pro Is that right? We, yes. Bob, <clears throat> Bob knew there wasn't anything we wouldn't do to keep him and his staff in place. I think John even offered to rename the university, as I recall. <laughs> 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 when did he officially let you know today he was making this decision? I don't know, one thirty, two o'clock, somewhere in that neighborhood. How long did that session take, and, and what was the mood of it? Really? <laughs> you really need to know what the mood of that was. I, it didn't take very long in my office. It took a little longer in John's office, but... Yeah, there'd be three or four minutes with silence. So he met with you, Tim, and then went to then, your office, John? And then he came over with Tim, yeah. Was there any kind of concession made by him to help soften the blow? I mean, anything, or was it just...